All right, Captain Ron here. Corey Clark. We're here to talk real estate again today. Everything with the market, real estate in Washington State, especially Pacific Northwest, buyers and sellers coming on up here and selling and moving and everything we're seeing, I guess, in the market right now. So let's start it off with, uh, let's start off with Corey. How's the market been with you? Um, I mean, it's definitely improved. It's been picking up. Um, I think, I think for the most part, buyers are kind of starting to settle into that understanding that the interest rates are just not going to drop to what they used to be back, you know, 2020, yeah. 2021. Um, so pe the buyers are kind of settling in and starting to move towards buying homes. However, we still have a low inventory and, uh, one of the statistics I heard was there's like five buyers for every one home. Yeah. So that's a problem. Uh, it's great for sellers, but, uh, that's a problem for buyers because you, you still have the higher interest rates, your affordability for what you might've wanted a couple of years ago is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have that competition still. So which it, it's well, and then, and then you add in the, with the listings, most buyers, what I'm seeing anyway, really want that house to be completely dialed in and not where, where a few years ago it was like, I don't care. Just give me the house Yep, and remodel. ROI. Yeah. But now it's more like, I, I want to make sure that this house is updated before I, yeah, <laughs> before I buy it. Well, and I, I look at you because I understand all of that and I've been watching all kinds of different stuff, research markets, numbers, everything like that. And there's a few theories that people are saying that they're trying to push the middle class and people out from not being able to afford a home. So they have to rent. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've heard that as well. Um, so I was curious. <laughs> no, I spring this on Corey. We've prepped nothing. We've done. We like to shoot from the hip. We really do, especially on these videos. I think it's more, oh, well, it's organic. It's real. It's just us spitballing and you get to interpret the video as you will, but it's us just shooting from what we're experiencing and dealing with, with our clients. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've heard, you know, that some of that talk about trying to price out the middle class and that, you know, that's unfortunate because I think about my kids and when it comes time for them to, to find housing, um, it's going to be hard. And that's kind of why I've talked in past videos about generational wealth and trying to buy them a rental, buy something that will set them up, um, for their future as well. And so it's, 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 it's tough. It's, it's yeah. tough out there for buyers. And, um, well, that's the new, I think that's the new theory is they're pushing everybody out. And my thought process is if you're getting pushed out of a home, even if you're overpriced, you can still afford to buy the home. There's some people are shooting saying Dave Ramsey says you need to save or only pay 25% of the home and this and that. And that doesn't, that doesn't work in Washington state, at least the Pacific Northwest. And I'll tell you why we have water, trees, ocean, mountains. We have everything you could need to survive if something goes crazy, to be honest. And if something goes crazy, here's the funny part. I was thinking about this later after I've watched this stuff and it, Everybody's like, well, they're trying to price everybody out. The economy's going to tank. The world's going to shit. It's all going to burn. All these conspiracy theories and end of days. And my thought process is if we're going to end of days, or even not even end of days, but even like COVID where, okay, shit went bad. They didn't make you make payments. You're in your house and it really gets bad. No one's paying anything, but at least you have a home and a land yeah. and everything. You're not in an apartment complex. You're not trying to scramble to find somewhere to go. You have a house, you have land, you have set up, and if shit gets really bad, you can put a fence up, you have your land, you can grow your crops, you can have everything, but at least you're in something. Mm -hmm. To be in an apartment, to be somewhere, and you're not ready, and you're like, oh, I'll just go find something. No offense, you're not going to find anything that's occupied because everybody's going to shoot. So unless you shoot better, which is always the fear, sure, you can shoot better and take over, but now you're selling your soul to kill someone for a piece of land or a house, where you could just have it and take it from the corporate companies or government. I know I'm going weird with this, but <laughs> why not get in the house and get settled? So if the market crashes, if something happens, I mean, yes, they can foreclose on your house, but I've seen a house that's been almost foreclosed on for about five years. Yeah. 
right. on the point, remember? And they kept making like one payment a year. Don't worry, one payment a year. And they just kept getting more and more in debt. You can offset foreclosure for years to come. It even, it even actually foreclosed and sold at auction and they got it back. Did they really? Yeah. They bought it back at auction? They, they somehow there was a, some kind of loophole <laughs> where they were able to pay something to buy it basically back. Wow. And yeah, it I was, wasn't following it that much yeah. <laughs> for you, Corey. <laughs> I only know that because I listed it once. Um, yeah. We both listed the same home years apart. Yeah. Uh, and we won't go into more detail because disclosures, but. Right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so what I was trying to say with all this is all the doom and gloom, end of world, all market crashing, this and that. It's not to rush you to get in the home. It's not to, hey, interest rates can go up and down. My thought process is why not get in a home while you can before, if anything, if they're all being right, why not get in a home before anything goes crappy? And at least you have your land established, your crops, your food. My biggest thing now is uh, I was just looking for the commercial from Corey and it's mayo with save the sandwiches or whatever it was was saying the crops with soybeans because the soil was so bad we're going to be out of sandwiches because of mayo by 2043 or 45 or something like that yeah and so it's it just that's literally a commercial and i don't know how much a predictor you are this or that but once you start seeing that of saying we're not going to have mayo for sandwiches in 20 years because of the land and crops and this and that just makes me think more of land. And I've had clients ask for land. Land's starting to get more and more non-existent in certain areas. And it just makes me think that land, along with water, is the most crucial point in real estate. I mean, as long as you can hold it and you can survive and you make the payments, and if stuff doesn't go bad because all these people are thinking doomsday, you still have to last. So if doomsday doesn't happen for 20, 40 years, you still have to make payments. You still have to live there. You still have to be able to survive on it. So yes, if you can afford a home, if you can buy it, great. And if your payments are tight, I get it. But at least you have a home you can start chipping down. You can build the equity. And it's not to sell you on, get it now before interest rates or this or that. Or if you're a doomsday and you think the market's going to crash, well, get a home anyways. If you think the food's going to crash or no water, get a home anyways. The point is, worst case scenario, you have somewhere to live. Yeah, and and it's a it, it's also a uh, it's an investment. It's something that's going to continue to grow in value. Um, Not if the world dies. No, I'm just joking. Well, <laughs> Sorry. yeah, I mean, yes, if all that crashes. Sorry, I went way dark that way. So. Yeah, um, but if it doesn't, so let's say that because I I've been hearing that forever. Let's say that doesn't happen. Worst case is what? It's an investment. Well, let's take it back to your your path that you're taking here as far as <laughs> Sorry, doomsday. But... See, we didn't, we didn't talk about this, so uh, this is <laughs> a dropped on me. But if you're considering it in that fashion as far as doomsday and all that, it is still an investment because if you got people that you trust, you barter that part of your land for crops. Or you have community that protects you. You, or have, you have water community. behind you. You have trees to burn if it gets cold for wood. You have land to grow crops. You have a safe shelter that's yours. You're not in an apartment complex with four, eight, ten people that just go crazy. You have a way to heat the place because now you have wood for fire, this and that. You have crops to grow. Apartment, you don't have anything. You're in trouble. And so, no matter how you look at it, it's a it's an investment one way or the other, whether it's monetary or it's doomsday. Doomsday. Yeah. And I was just talking to a guy that's running the Safeway and he's like, we have literally, if everything shuts down, we have two days worth of food for everybody at the grocery stores all through. So chain line supply stop this or that. It's not to be conspiracy theory or this or that. It's literally if food stops, you have to admit everybody's rushing the grocery store. They'll clean out the grocery store. No chains bringing it back. You have two days worth of food. I hope you've done the Mormon prepping. No offense to Mormons, but Mormons have prepped in cans and everywhere else. Uh, so I hope you have your prepping of food if something happens like that again. Chainline showed immediately. And the biggest thing I think is 
EMP, we're just, I'm just going down this path of fuck it, but EMP, nothing moves then. I, I don't even know what that is. EMP, electric magnetic <laughs> pulse. Oh, yeah, shuts yeah. Shuts down. I, okay. I knew something electronic, but I wasn't. Yeah, so let's say electronic, no cell phones, no communication, no way to drive any vehicles, all that stuff. Now it's really shut down. Uh, I think they made a movie on that. We actually watched it. It was okay. Um, some famous actors were, that kind of happened, and then it caused terror and this and that, and the girl went down in the basement and watched the Friends. Yep, I saw that. You know that. what I mean? Yeah. That was, that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, and everything goes to haywire. The whole point is to have at least your section, have your food, this and that, and you just chill. Wasn't it like Elba or whatever his name is? Oh, the black dude. Yeah. The... Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so, but that's, that's kind of the same thing as you have, you know, I think that's more, even if it's not human made EMP, solar flare, this or that, or whatever, to be honest, I think that's why, at least myself, I'm getting so many buyers wanting land, wanting water, wanting land and water, wanting self-sustaining. And it's not just hey, we're worried we're doomsday preppers. It's just the reality of it because two-fold investment. My side of, hey, this is worst case scenario, that's an investment. Best case scenario in 20, 40 years, you have water and land. Yeah. You're, not in a, you're not in a disadvantage either way. One way, if it doesn't go to shit, you still have to keep paying for it. Because the shit, you don't have to pay for it, but now you have to fight for it. So one of the two, it's either fighting with guns or fighting with cash. You still have to control it. So I think that's more of, at least in my mind, the issue is, can you control it either with money to help sustain it for the value and the, uh, you know, the investment of it? Or if it does, in worst case, go to shit, you better have guns. Unless you're really good with a knife. God, we, I did not prep Corey for any of this. And I didn't mean to go sideways or doomsday, <laughs> but it's... It's the reality. Water is the most precious commodity besides air and land. And we're running out of everything in between. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, things as far as environmental, environmentally, and I know that this is a heavily debated topic, but uh, in my opinion, things are within our planet are changing. Um, you know, look at California. I've had a lot of California buyers come here and that one of their first questions is, does the well ever run out of water? And it's like, yeah. well, no, it doesn't. And they're, you know, they're very concerned about that because they do run out of water in California. Yep. And uh, that's, that's a big deal. Uh, Washington does not experience that at this time. And could we experience that maybe in the future? Possibly. I don't know. Time will tell, but uh, we're good with that right now. Uh, but that's that's a well now. Uh, like I think what Ron's talking about is access to actual water, streams, lakes, you know, sound, those things, um, and food. And food well, yeah, too. fish, right? Clams, shrimp, everything. And you're right, water too. I mean, do aquifers run out? Luckily, we have the water coming down from Canada through the Columbia River. We have our own mountains, the Cascades, with the snowfall, although I've heard our snowfall was limited this year. Mm -hmm. Again, so we are, to be honest, if you didn't hear the news this morning, we are going to be in a drought already. We've done an emergency drought of 4.6 million that they can tap into already before summer's even hit mm. in Washington State because we have that global warming. I'm sorry, fine, don't call it global warming, just... Sun's getting hotter. I don't know how to... <laughs> sun get hot. Uh, <laughs> uh, radiation, everything else, the bullshit. The problem is we did not have as much snowfall. We've already tapped into 4.6 million of drought funds in Washington State alone. And you want to talk about the deserts, California, south of there? You guys are screwed. No offense if we have water. So, and we have fresh water. I have a whole lake out here. Now, how disgusting is it? It's extremely disgusting. Will I have to boil it for an hour? Absolutely. Do I have firewood up here with trees to boil it? Absolutely. Um, natural gas, this and that, but at least I have water. So I can boil it. I can spread it to my small little grass crops to 
grow the food, the catches, we have the resources. Yeah. At least up here. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, uh, you can I, boil salt water too, right? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Just double. I know you could. I just want to double check. Yeah. So at least you have the sound. You can grab from the ocean, boil the shit out of the sound then. Yeah. I mean, if I, if it were me in that, if things got that terrible, I, I likely wouldn't be sticking around my house just because I live in a community and, um, I'd probably be heading for the hills. Would you be at your folks's or do you think you'd go further in the mountains? I'd probably go further in the mountains if it got that bad. Would you? Yeah. Where would you go? I, I don't know. Do you want to go with me? <laughs> sure. Because I have a few spots. I have. At least I have. I, I haven't told you this, but so the sound, at least right here, we have multiple spots. So Olympia, Washington, you have like a spawn. You have, you can go to the mountains, you can go north, you can go west, you can go up the sound, you can go to the peninsula, mm. you can go south, you can literally go everywhere and you're along everything. But I think I would go up towards Canada, way up in the mountains, up in the inlets, up there. You have the mountains, the fresh water, the lakes, the food <clears> up there, <throat> populations remote. Well, it gets a little more dicier because people can actually shoot, you know, a little better. But you go up and you can, you can pick a spot way up in the inlet and you take boat, plane, just go way up in the middle of nowhere. At least if it got that bad. Yeah, yeah. Because here, even with us, and you're right in the neighborhoods, the whole city would push out to take advantage of, oh, you have land, you have a house, this yeah. and that. I even told Brandy, we just board everything up, but to be honest, we'd take what we could and just go. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of stuck in one way in, one way out here. Yeah, and plus they just, there's Unless multiple places. Swim. They come across the boat, this yeah. or that. They'd sniper across or this or that. No, we go way up. We're going real dark and deep here, but <laughs> I, think, I think that segues to another thing. Where are you at location-wise? Because if you're down in the desert, no planes, no cars, move, anything else, have fun hiking your happy ass up here just to get the water. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious, right? Yeah. You're carrying supplies and this and that, and you're hiking your happy ass up here. There's no way because EMP, solar flare, whatever the hell, no cars work except for the old 1960s, 70s trucks that can actually run. Yeah. And that's if the battery's been covered with an EMP cover, so at least the battery works with everything. So they're smart enough to do that, or it's in a metal box or whatever. Uh, I should research more about that. Uh, but at least they have a truck. So you have the few trucks that can drive up here. You're hiking. And you're hiking with your gear, and you have millions of people doing mass exodus because water shuts down two, three weeks. If you go without water with the two, three weeks, no pumps, anything, just watch the flood come up. So at least we're here centered where we have water, this and that. And then we can decide, okay, can we get the boat engine working? Are we canoeing and paddling our happy ass up the sound to the mountains? Are we hiking up to the mountains? But at least we're here already. I mean, to hike up the Mount Rainier with everybody else would be a trek, but I, yeah. guess, I guess we could do it. I mean, the point is we're here now. So I digress. This is supposed to be real estate. <laughs> This is like a new podcast of like... Well, I'm just spitballing here. Like the whole point <laughs> of this is if you're, if you're looking at real estate and all these videos, end of the world, doomsday, markets crashing, no money, no food, this and that, don't you want to own somewhere that is at least self-sustaining that you can be like, okay, at least I can self-sustain. We don't have the crazy warmth. We don't have this and that. We do have some heat, a little drought, but you have water, food, mountains, everything else, where at least you could somewhat survive. I mean, some may say, well, I don't want to survive. Just drop a bomb. Like my folks are so old. They're like, yeah, we don't want to deal with it anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's multiple reasons why I would want to own, you know, like just land, um, you know, not, not just because I want to prepare for that type of, of event, but also just because I enjoy that space. Um, being in wilderness is uh, something that I enjoy. So um, I think, I mean, each person is going to have their own interpretation of what they like or enjoy and why they want to own a property or, or land or a home. Um, there's going to be that, uh, internal buy-in of, of why they want it. But this, this topic kind of talks about 
extending that thought process of why it might be important to own land or your yeah. own place and and so I didn't mean to to push it I think I think what the reality is is that's probably not a reality and in the back mind though you can always be prepared because I've had people as bought the land bought the river and this and that and they didn't like it way out there and they were so far out there they're like it didn't come COVID especially a lot of people went and bought that land <laughs> yeah and then it didn't happen they're way out in the country and they came back to civilization or city and are like, we way over prepped. We weren't prepared. We couldn't handle it. And now we didn't want that. So I think that's the catch is like Corey and I are in town. Now, can we bail out? Absolutely. And do we have the survival skills? Absolutely. Corey is the first one. I'm well, maybe not calling a radio in. I'm going to like try to like signal <laughs> flare or something like that. But however, we're going to do it. Um, you know, old school transmitter radios will jump on the Mormon towers because they have the towers that will actually sustain. It does. <laughs> but the, the catch is you're somewhere that gives you the chance to survive, I think is the main purpose of this video. Because here you're in a city, you're not worried. I don't think of ever like, hey, it's going to go to shit. Are we ready and prepared? Absolutely. We, do we have everything? 90%. I mean, there's still always 10%, maybe 15% that we need. But ultimately, what I like about up here is we have the fresh air. We have the water. We have the trees. We have the mountains. We have everything. I mean, I can plant and garden, know nothing about garden. And again, 90% of it will grow. Yeah. And water and light and the soil is amazing. And it's just boom. And I look like a champion at growing. I'm like, check it out. And that's the reality of it. Yeah, that's something I, since we've moved, I haven't gotten my planter beds made yet. Not a, I'd like to, because I know, I like to grow it's stuff. Flacking. So I, I grow think, grass now. <laughs> I think with reality, let's digress from end of worlds. I think with reality of Washington State, even though the interest rates are where they're at and this and that, it's not to pressure you to buy, it's, it's you're building something. You're building a life, a home, a family, whatever that may seem, whatever that may look like, however you want to describe it to your own, you're coming up here and you're buying a home and you're saying, this is my home. Payments may be a little high, mortgage this and that, everything else, but you're biting the bullet. Maybe you don't eat out as much. You don't do as much Starbucks. You take a few years off of vacation and do some camping trips. You do some home improvements. You camp in your backyard, but you have your home. You're building your castle. And that's, that's, that's what you do. Yeah. And, I mean, home, home, home ownership is, has its moments of not being cheap. But, again, it goes back to take away the, the thought of cra the market crashing and all that. It's always historically grown inequity so your investment is just going to continue to grow and it, you know that there's in my my mind there's multiple faucets of that equity it's one monetarily two it's building those memories with the family it's yep. three it's building it what you want it to be for your home so if there's things that you you've always wanted in your own home you can do that because it's yours um, <clears throat> if you have a lot of land, yeah. yeah, if you have a lot of land and you had fond memories of, you know, as a kid growing up, going out and build forts or whatever, you can do that. Um, you know, it, it's, there's just a ton of different things you can do with it. Uh, if you're, if you like to grow vegetables or whatever, that, that's another fun thing to do. And maybe you've never done it in your, in your life, but try it sometime and you might enjoy it. Like yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I do enjoy it. I should say. Um, it's, well, it does and, come with some hardships too. You will have a client texting me this morning, pipe burst, you know, pipe breaks. You have to fix that. You, uh, there's stuff that does drive you crazy. And I think that gives you two things. It, it's a pain in the ass and you have to deal with it and it is expensive sometimes, but it teaches you take these two hands, fix a pipe to deal with it, to understand this is, I'm able to accomplish something, gives you some pride of ownership. 
yes, you can call a plumber, this and that, and fix it, and you can. Well, I think that kind of goes, uh, like I was raised where something broke, you go and fix it yourself. Absolutely. Um, and I think we've... At least as, for us. Yeah, as a society, we've kind of turned to hiring the professional, which is, is perfectly fine. Um, you know, like there are definitely times that I hire somebody to do something that I know perfectly well how to do it. Uh, but I, I either don't have the time, I don't want to do it. Um, I will say YouTube video, you can watch everything on YouTube. I forget about YouTube mm -hmm. sometimes. I'm like, holy shit, all I had to do was Google YouTube and be like, how to fix this. And there's like a hundred videos of people showing you step by step. Yeah. Literally. And if you can't figure that out, then maybe you shouldn't own. I'm sorry. I really do mean that because if you can't follow those YouTube videos and there's times when you, I was always taught don't mess with electric yet. We can do electric. And my dad taught me how to wire electric. My dad taught me everything with building homes, this and that. But when it came to full on doing electric, he said, just hire someone. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't like to mess with electric either, but I, um, you do outlets. You do I, I've done outlets. I can, I do lighting, do outlets, all that stuff. Yeah. And Bands. I, I've YouTube some stuff because I want to run some more outlets, uh, to my deck that I just built and which is easier. Yeah. Yeah. It's much easier than I expected. Um, that was not something that we did when I was growing up was do electrical type of stuff, but, uh, it, plumbing. Rel you guys it's like plumbing? relatively easy. Plumbing, again, plumbing, in my opinion, was we did do some, but... Um, and we did plumbing, too. Uh, for some reason, I'm, like, notorious at letting pipes leak. I don't know what the fuck it is with plumbing. My wife always laughs. She's like, I'm actually better at electrical than plumbing. She's like, don't do plumbing. I don't know. I been crazy. Since I started my general contracting business, I've done a few jobs where people let their shit le <laughs> leak, and I'm like... Oh, don't let it leak. Like I've had to replace the whole subfloor in a house as a bathroom because their damn seal was failed oh, the, on their toilet. The toilet yeah. And it was just leaking for who knows how long, but it was it destroyed the subfloor and like, we really you need have, a better thing than that wax seal. Sorry to think they but do. I hate that wax seal. They make a they make a the are you talking about the pink rubber thing? Yeah, it's it's uh, corky. Um, is that new? New or it's fairly new, but yeah, it's not wax. It's supposed to be better, and that's what I use on everything now. Is this... really? Yeah, I put it on my toilet. I put it on this new one I just did. I we have those here. Um, it's not a wax seal, but nonetheless, if you have a leak, <laughs> fix the damn thing because you're going to cause so much more problems. <laughs> and and I'll, plumbing, you know, plumbing sucks, but. It's so easy to do, really. Yeah. If you're running new plumbing, that's a little more complicated and uh, detail oriented, and you got to know all the different heights and, heights and whether or not it's got to be vented or not vented. Or oh, know. I love PEX piping. Holy shit! Yeah, PEX piping. You, God, my dad taught me to solder with old copper, and the PEX piping, you just snap it in. Holy yeah, some of the new products are make it much easier, but still. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that would be a scenario where if I don't have to, I'll, I'll hire somebody to do the plumbing if it's a major plumbing thing, but little thing, little plumbing type of things. Um, now I can't do that legally for my business because I'm not a licensed plumber, but if it's on my house, I will do it. I will do it. A little description, we'll put that below. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what we were trying to say is owning a house is rewarding so many levels yes you will hit different thresholds of doing this or that or work and everything else but at the end of the day what you get from building your empire your community your castle whatever you're doing and with neighbors and this and that it's uh, i think it's unbelievable it's not only rewarding for in the future on both aspects of any way you want to look at it i i don't see any downfall the only downfall i can see is if you can't handle any maintenance, you can't do anything, you can't do any skills, and you're like, screw it, I just want to rent, then fine, rent. There's plenty of people that own homes, us including, that will rent you a home, and we'll say, here you go. If something arises, we're going to come out and fix it ourselves, so we don't have to pay someone to fix it. Dishwasher breaks is like, I swear to God, the normal thing that every time happens. Um, 
uh, or whatever, but that's fine. We'll let you build our equity. We'll let you make us a bunch of money by doing rental. And it's not to say thank you, thank you, thank you, because I am saying thank you. It's you can be a landlord. You can own a rental. You can own a house. You can do all this stuff. It's actually buying a home and that's for first-time buyers and the people watching this probably aren't first-time buyers the people who are buying this have actually bought a lot and now they're thinking of moving to washington state and they're thinking of moving to washington state because they realize what's going on with global warming moving migration water land everything else and now they're trying to pick up here and i will say i've been tracking land for a while we're out of land around olympia washington yeah right? there's not a lot of usable well not good land, right? N not if you're considering it in the context of like in end of marketplace. Um, there's there's plenty of land that you can throw a little shack on and <laughs> and do what you want to do. But if you're looking at land that you really want, that you want to develop that has to fall within the guidelines of where you're living as far as uh, the county rules and yeah. regulations, there's not a lot of that. No, we have nothing. There's like very little of that, uh, if to nothing. I mean, it, it's it's pretty bad. Like I have a lot of buyers that are like, I want some land that I can develop, and then I explain to them all the details and and all the land that they were interested in was like, yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> so I just had a buyer that sent me an email. We want this, and she lined out everything. I'm like, so does everybody else. Like. Everybody else wants exactly what you want. Get in line with the thousands of people wanting that piece of land. We have yeah. no land around here. Now, if you go further out, I sent them an email up Port Townsend. Mm -hmm. has some nice 20 acres Yeah, the, up it, that way. If you want to live in more rural. Or Port Angeles. Like, sorry, Port Angeles up that way. Yeah, like rural. I mean rural. Yep. You, you can find that land, but you're not going to have all the amenities that you have closer to these Correct. bigger cities. And... We learned from COVID where people were like, oh, I can live anywhere as yeah. long as I have internet. And then they go live there and they're like, ah, oh, this sucks. I yeah. don't want to live here anymore. Well, that was the catch. I have 20 acres, beautiful 20 acres up in Port Angeles. So we just lost our light. Well, you get to see us now with ourselves. I look better this way anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the catch is up in Port Angeles, you go to date night, you have one to two, I don't know, restaurants if that. I, I, I mean, think, think of like Forks, Washington. It's the same thing, right? Yeah. You have one stoplight. You have maybe two restaurants that are Yeah. Well, you could start a restaurant, decent. I guess. Decent. I mean, there's a, there's a cool bar there that uh, I, I frequent when I'm in the area. <laughs> but uh, it, it's very limited. And it is just a tiny little town, sleepy little logging town. Uh, or if you're big into um, the heck that book series. That oh, are, uh, Twilight. Twilight. Yeah. If you're big into Twilight, and there you go. Yeah. And I still uh, do the tours and the bus tours there in Forks with Twilight. And I guess yeah. it's not as cool anymore because we're starting to do warming up, so it's not as dark. You got to go like dead of winter to go get the rain and the fall and the feel of Twilight. But there's. Corey hit the nail on the head. There's places out there around Washington State that you can buy that are chunks of land that are good chunks of land. Able for well, septic, water, trees, woods, land, animals, everything like that. Problem is you're at a one-stop town. You're in Port Angeles. No offense, Port Angeles. Nice little town, but you it's don't... Like Port Angeles to Forks is like an hour and a half around the horn. Yeah. Yeah. And but you again, a few restaurants, maybe a diner, this or that. It's not like, hey, honey, we're going to date night. Let's get dressed up. If you <laughs> dress up, you're screwed out there in a nice way. I mean, you look good. I wouldn't yeah, say screwed, good. but you know what I'm talking about. You might get a funky look, but if you're not wearing camo, camo uh, or or <laughs> your hickory shirt and <laughs> and suspenders. I mean, it, it, it's. I'm not trying to be rude or anything. It's, it's true. It's just a life that that people live in that area. And I, I talk I actually about like Forks. Port Angeles. I like. I, I mean, I haven't spent a lot of time in uh, Port Angeles, but I spent a lot of time in Forks because my my stepmother's from there, and um, I went used to go there as a kid and spend time with the cousins and uh, run from the police because <laughs> we were out doing shit we shouldn't have. I, but I've never done that before. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, Forks is a. Uh, it's it's off the beaten path and there's not a lot to do there 
but it's I I enjoy being there just because I like the the country and I like to be out there and well and Port Angeles has the Black Ball Ferry that goes up to Victoria the capital of Canada up in BC on Vancouver Island and you have Black Ball Ferry and they have the little breakfast place right two blocks up north from or south from the ferry and you can go up and have a nice breakfast and whatnot and a little chalkboard and very trendy but that's... yeah there's a couple of places there in Port Angeles that are decent little places I, I think we I don't know if they still have it but like the it was like a 50s Diner. Diner or something yeah. like that. It's kind of cool. But the point of that is, is there's land out there. Now, key locations around Seattle, Olympia, Tacoma, anywhere else, you're pushed way out to where, again, are you ready to live out that far? Because yeah. are you wanting to sacrifice convenience for land and so forth? So, how are we trying to wrap this up? You want to wrap this up elegantly for me? Otherwise, I'm going to go Doomsday. Oh, uh, I'll buy, try. Buy a Vault Tech. <laughs> I'll try. Uh, I think the basis of the story is like, in my opinion, is like, if you are ready to own something, there's no better time than now, even though we have higher interest rates, be because you're going to gain equity and whether it's, whether it's in barter or, or things of that nature within doomsday period or whether it's in the current marketplace. So historically, statistically, buying and purchasing homes and land, it always increases. Um, well it, said. I and then, that's good. Yeah, and then you just add in all the enjoyment that you can have within creating this uh, oasis that you may want may have always wanted to create with your ownership. Now, lastly, there, we understand that there are some people that just are like, I don't care about that. And that's great. That's, that's fine. As long as you know that, Video, fantastic. Video is not for you. Yeah. But I think 90% of the people, I'm on this 90% kick, will understand that they want to do their own thing at their house. They want to make it their own. They want to paint it. They have all these ideas. Love that. You come out and individualize that house the way you want. As long as it's not in the HOA on the outside that you can do, do your own thing. Do your own thing on the land. Do build your world that you want. I think that's the, that's the American dream in the essence is this is your oasis. This is your life. This is who you want to be with your house. And I think that's where it starts. And that's where we kind of take back America is by having home ownership. The way we lose America is by renting homes, giving it to other people to be a rental, and you're now giving someone else your money to the big corporate companies. Make yeah. it your own, start with that, small, big, whatever it is, start with home ownership, and then let's start bringing back that America dream just by the home, because that's the essence what it is. And then from there we can spawn. Yeah. All right, well that was it. Captain Ron out. <laughs> Corey, later. See you guys. Have a good day.